Our final team is from Wesleyan University. It's made up of Kennedy Odede and Ariel Tolman. And they're going to come up and tell you about Shining Hope for Communities. Come on up, please. life was so difficult. I remember how my mom used to suffer. I remember the pain that my mom passed through. My dad mistreated my, dad, my mom, beaten and blamed in a society whereby to eat per day is luck. People pass days without meal. I remember what I passed through. I remember my sister, the real sister, at the age of 16 no food in the house, a young girl, she has to go out and have a baby, not because she like, but because the life that we are passing through. I remember when I ran to the street because of life was so difficult, there was no food in the house, I turned into street and I became a street boy at the age of 10 years. I looked around and I saw Young girls at the age of six selling their body not because they want but because life is so difficult and nowhere they can turn to. I saw young boys and girls turning into guns not because they lack but because of life. I saw my society turning into drugs. I looked around. And I said to myself, that's why I was the age of 18, and I said, I can't change the whole world, but I have to do something in this society that I was born. I started the first grassroots organization in Kibera Slam. I was told I don't have money, I can't do it, but I made it. Young people came together, we were able to do cleanup in the slam. We were able to play soccer. We were able to come and talk to each other and share our problems. Miracles happened. When I got, after, that's after six years struggling in the slum. I won a scholarship to study in the American University. At the airport, my mom pulled me aside and said, my son Kennedy, you saw what we passed through. Never forget where you came from. And then when I went to America, I remembered my sister, and I remembered my society, and I remembered my community. And I said, never forget them. And I met great leaders, like Harry Tolman, in, a, in my university at West Ham. <laughs> Fairly few organizations worldwide are led by leaders like Kennedy. I had the immense privilege and joy of joining the Shining Hope for Communities team this past fall at Wesleyan University. Kennedy and I are not alone. We're joined by an incredible group of students from across the country. Our board and lead mentors include leading experts in business, microfinance, health, and education. Together with the community, the community at all points in our stages continues to inform our model and the projects that we pursue. We have developed an innovative model that places women at the center of community development in places of extreme poverty. Research has shown time and time again that investing in women by giving them access to resources is the fastest, is the best way to transform whole communities in the, in the developing world. That's why in our model we link tuition-free schools for girls to holistic community centers for all by tangibly associating these free schools for girls to services that the entire community needs and desperately needs. The community comes to associate these services with an institution dedicated to girls' education. In doing so, we increase the value placed on women while stimulating the whole local economy. 
In 2009, when my mom told me at the airport, <laughs> never ceased my mind. And the struggle that I passed through never ceased my mind. In 2009, I was able to go back home and build the first free school for girls, free education. My community was so happy to see their son coming back into the slum and helping them to start a free school. The Kabira School for Girls, which Kennedy founded, currently serves 45 of Kabira's neediest and brightest young girls. These are girls who had no hope of getting an education. In Kabira, only 8% of girls ever have the chance to go to school at all. But in our school, these girls have a, we expect that 75% will graduate high school, 50% will go on to post-secondary education, which opens up a whole new realm of economic opportunities. The school uses this Montessori-inspired curriculum that's really innovative for Kenya. There we, using hands-on learning and creativity, our, our girls love school, as Kennedy can tell you. And in addition, this curriculum truly works. After only three months of operation, the Kabira, students of the Kabira School for Girls are already a year ahead of their peers in government schools. With your help with investing in the Shining River communities, we expect to expand the school to ultimately to eighth grade, adding new students and teachers every year. But in addition, adjacent to the Kabira School for Girls, we founded the Shining Hope Community Center. This houses our seven core income generating service initiatives, or IGSIs. These social services tackle the most severe community deficits in, in Kabira sanitation, food security, education, job skill and literacy training. These services are available for the whole community. But by charging accessible small fees, for, we are able to generate income that we are then able to reinvest in our nonprofit venture. This hybrid business model not only provides the whole service, the whole community with services that they absolutely need, but in addition allows us to diversify our revenue stream, makes the project long-term sustainable. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanna thank RGK, I wanna thank Dell, and I wanna thank all of you. I wanna tell you that this is the first time that I believed that uh, somebody from the slum can stand in front of people. And I wanna thank the American people I want to tell you, without the America, I was nothing. When I was in the slum, I didn't have any voice. But now there is giving me a voice that I can share with you. And I believe when we partner together, when the people's choice and the Kibera slum's choice combine together, we're going to move the mountains. And Kenya is just the beginning. Thank you so much.